Hello and welcome to the Buckets and Tea NBA show. I'm your host, Catherine Niker. Thanks so much for tuning into this week's episode. Today, you know him, you love him. He's an NBA reporter for SDPN Sports. It's S. Barahenny. How you doing, buddy? Hi. Thank you very much for having me again. I wish I literally just finished my tea. So I wish Ooh. I had you know would have had the tea for buckets. what what kind of tea were you drinking it was an earl gray tea it's wow. a pretty boring tea no yeah. i just didn't i didn't expect you to be an earl gray well guy. i didn't have any options you know I, it oh, was, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the mood for tea and the earl gray earl gray was the only thing in the house it was either that or persian tea and yes. uh, you know persian tea has its time and place uh it's it's good but i just wanted something different you know just is it, it just too bit. early in the afternoon for persian tea is that what it is if you ask my mother it is never too early in the afternoon for persian okay. tea she's okay. like five cups a day type yeah. of thing it's like yeah. they're they're hooked onto that like opium but anyways thank you very much for having me <laughs> <laughs> uh my pleasure i'm a big tea person i like a variety of teas nice. but uh and i have one of those like boxes you know where you put like the different types of teas like mm -hmm. the individual bags you know i i'm that person but to start off the day it's coffee oh yeah yeah yeah, you're right. I gotta start right. off with coffee, and then I and then I'll have tea later. So, um, Mina, my wife, she just recently went to Trader Joe's. She like actually yes. like actively drove all the way to Buffalo just to go to wow. Trader Joe's. Wow, I know, crazy. Uh, That's anyways. how you know when we're really adults. Yeah, I know, right? Uh, but she got this like creamer, okay, and it was the best creamer I've ever had in my life for a coffee. It was like this Cinnabon creamer oh. and it just it made everything taste so good every kind of coffee was just like 10 times better with this was thing. it just like pumpkin spice latte every day kind it was of kind thing? of like that yeah it was yeah. kind of like that i was i had i we ran out of it we got to go to trader joe's again but uh, i had like a regular coffee today uh besides the tea yes i know yeah and uh and it wasn't the same it didn't hit the same it didn't give me the same you know pizzazz it usually does it kind of let me down wow Wow. Well, you're going to have to just buy like the whole shelf the next time you go because you're not going to like drive to Buffalo every time. I know she wants to go and get a cooler so we can like just stock up on a lot of these things, you know, so I understand. I'm mm -hmm. obsessed with these olives from Whole Foods okay. and I don't live near a Whole Foods. So whenever I go, I buy an insane amount of olives like I don't look like a normal person. Are you a big olive fan? Because I'm a big olive fan. I could, yeah. I could, I could like sit down and finish. Yeah, I can bowl. eat them like chips. Mm -hmm. Me too. Yeah, it's yeah. bad. Anyway, all right, we should talk basketball. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we should talk some basketball, maybe. Uh, so this week, obviously, you know, it's it's the chokehold scene around the world. Uh, Draymond yeah. Green got into it with Rudy Gobert after uh, Clay Thompson got into it with, uh, you know, what's his name from, from the <laughs> <laughs> The disrespect. Hey, he's 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 the disrespect. He's a Raptors brother, man. <laughs> the disrespect. From off what's his top. name from the Timberwolves? <laughs> right I off love the that. top. Uh, that. You know, as if they couldn't take any more of these Timberwolves. Uh, <laughs> anyway, so Draymond's been suspended five games. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people have a lot to say about this. Was it enough? Was it too little? Uh, was it too many? I've seen opinions across the board. So S, how do you stand on this? I think it was just right. Five games makes a lot of sense. Uh, if you look at like the, the length of suspensions, I mean, guys, Miles Bridges, just that's all I have to say. 10 Ooh. games, uh, oh. for, for what he did, which is reprehend, you know, like, just like, yeah, I, yeah. I can't even, you can't even like fathom and. At the same yeah, time, yeah. I, I mean, it's like, should he even be in the league? Is a legit exactly, game, so. yeah, right. And yeah. he got ten games, and like for Draymond, I think five games, given his history of like, there's a clip that's going around of just like all the highlights of the violent behavior <laughs> that Draymond <laughs> has had throughout his career, um, and I thought that was really funny. I I'm usually like a an apologist for Draymond. I'm just like, well, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. I I usually do the well, you know, but like. Dude, he 
took full advantage of the situation. Rudy Gobert wasn't even doing anything. Rudy Gobert. The way he leapt in is like, I was laughing. I was actually laughing mainly because we all knew Rudy Gobert was fine, but I was laughing at this, at the replay because I was watching this game live. And then I was like looking at my phone because the game just started. And then I looked up and I was like, what the hell is going on? Yeah. And then, and then Clay Thompson had his Jersey ripped, which was like low key, very hot. Cause I love Clay Thompson. (laughs) Okay. I'm sorry. Clay Thompson is like my NBA husband. If I could marry anyone in the NBA it would be Clay Thompson. So I was like, wow. And then I saw the replay and I just laughed so hard because it was so extra. It was so next level. Yeah, it was it was over the top and it just felt like it was pent up. Like he was loading this up. He was like, the moment I see this man, the moment I get the opportunity to, I'm taking advantage. <laughs> it's like, have you ever seen someone get into an argument with someone you don't like? And you're like, you know what? That person, I'm gonna back them up. And like that that was kind of the energy that Draymond had. It was yeah, like, he I'm came take- in like, and another one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to take full advantage of the situation and do a UFC move on your oh ass. Oh, my God. Uh, it was, yeah, it was crazy. I mean, look, it, it's, it makes sense that he was suspended for five games. Uh, I don't think he should have been suspended for more. I don't think he should have been suspended for less. I actually think it's just right. Like, five games is, like, pretty good for him especially given he's going to lose like a million dollars or whatever out of this. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I get it. I agree. I agree that the suspension feels right. Like in terms of five games, I also like um, when people are like, no, like the league needs to send this guy a message. I don't know if he would get the message you want him to get by suspending him like 10 plus games. I feel like he would self victimize himself. Right. And then he would turn himself into like some sort of martyr for Mm -hmm. like competitive basketball. I don't think he'd actually be like, yeah, you know what? You're right. I went too far. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, that's not going to be how he takes it. So there's no like there's no like, quote unquote, lesson to be had by him in this scenario. I feel like he's like, this is who I am. You know, very Pat Beverly like. Right. Like not that Pat's done this exactly. But just like, this is who I am. This is how I've made a name for myself, right? And it's like, when someone is rewarded for a certain type of behavior, mm-hmm. it's you can't tell them not to do the thing that yeah. they've constantly been rewarded for. Yeah, and the Warriors like are comfortable teetering that line with him. Like They know that like that gives him some sort of competitive edge over people, just the way he like is. Um, and I think... When you we've seen it when the Warriors are bad, like the last what was it the last year when they the, the year that they drafted James Wiseman and the Warriors were just terrible. Draymond sucked that year because there was no reason for him to be competitive. There was no reason for him to like yeah. get up for a game. And so you kind of need this when you it's like the whole package. But obviously he went too far with it. Obviously doing a chokehold on someone is like <laughs> is like a little too far. Um, and I, yeah, for someone I, who wasn't even wasn't like responsible even for the conflict, yeah, well, not to the, say that it would have been okay if he did it to like Jada McDaniels, but but really, like, right. yeah, yeah, oh yeah. god, yeah, no, it's just it's insane. And if you go look at that highlight video of like all the moments, it just it kind of shows just how absolutely wild Draymond is sometimes. It we we're not that far removed from him stepping on Demontis Sabonis's chest in the yeah. middle of a playoff game, you yeah. know, like giving him an indent in his chest. I I don't know. I just it's kind of what he is, who he is. Yeah. Point. I uh I agree. I mean, I also like Steve Kerr with the spin. Oh yeah. Uh, Post game, yeah. did you see that well, when Warriors, he was like Yeah, with the Warriors in general, like even the broadcast when it was happening, they were like, "Oh, well Draymond had to step in." You know, of course. Yeah, immediately defending him. Yeah. I yeah, just... the level of bias was pretty wild. Like I don't know if even our Raptors broadcast would be that level of bias. No, no, no. I don't the, think so at all. The Warriors are the Warriors broadcast is next level. <laughs> like I I have to unfortunate because Steph Curry is like one of the greatest, you know, players to watch in the league. But I do watch a lot of Warriors games on mute because it, oh. they're just exhausting to w- listen. I've to. heard other people say like the, the Warriors broadcast is one of the worst. Ooh, it is bad. It like, it, I, I can't believe they haven't like changed it. It's been like this for the entire Steph Curry tenure. And it's like, 
how do you not realize how bad this broadcast is? Like people don't yeah. enjoy. I I literally listen to it on mute. I have to listen to it. You know what? I think like their home base probably, probably loves, loves it. it. Yeah, probably. I think yeah. that's what it is. Yeah. But yeah, like I mean, I know like Steph Curry, like or sorry, um, Steve Kerr has to like you know stick up for Draymond, and I felt like it was a deliberate attempt mm-hmm. to give you know what would be his side of the story in order to lessen what was inevitably a suspension of some kind right like i I think that was um very strategic on their part and i think that was why he did it but even like i consider myself a warriors fan and even i was like come on yeah yeah there's no way yeah no, I agree with you. Like, the, there's, there's like a very hard that you can't justify that. Like, there's just, there's no way to justify it. And when you watch the clip, Steve Kerr is literally saying, Draymond, please stop. You're about to kill the guy. Like, just stop doing this. You can see in his face the fear that Steve Kerr had that this situation could go really wrong. Uh, and yeah, like, it's, yeah, it's, but it was also like, Steph's, not, Steph's not in this game and we need you. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And and Steph's not going to play uh, tonight against or well, we're recording this on Thursday. So by the time this is out, uh, that game will already happen against OKC mm-hmm. uh, with a knee sprain. So not sure how many games Steph's going to miss. Yeah. Uh, Clay's been fined, so he'll be back. But also he's kind of been inconsistent this year. I actually kind of like really enjoyed watching the rest of that game. Yeah, it was a great game. Yeah. yeah, you know, like the Warriors actually led for most of the game, and then and then the Timberwolves were able to make a comeback in the fourth and and take mm-hmm. it. But uh, I uh, I picked up Saric for my uh, fantasy. So did I, because <laughs> yes, I, I was too. like, he's immediately gonna step in because I was like, yeah. I know Draymond's gonna get suspended. Mm-hmm. He's gonna get more minutes. Wiggins sucks. Yeah. Who's yeah, also on my fantasy team. I mean, I'm last. I'm dead last on my fantasy team. Man, no one take I, fantasy advice from me. It's so funny because, like, you would think we'd be good at fantasy basketball, right? Like, <laughs> I, you would think with the amount of basketball we watch, with the amount of basketball. We would like, be good at it, yeah. We would be so good at it. But I suck every single year. And this happens to me with sports betting, too. Like, people will be like, oh, over, under, this. And I'm like, man. I don't know, but I can tell you if Scotty Barnes does this, you know, or I can tell you if if, whatever. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's so funny because every year I, I, and it's like, even in my friend group, I probably watch the most basketball out of all of them. And I still suck in fantasy. It's just so depressing. I don't know how to get over this thing. I think it's because I, I like, I try to be too hot takey with my picks like i'd be like oh he might it? be a, he might have a good year this year so i'm gonna take him and I, no one's gonna know and like i just it, i overthink it i overthink it i, I probably too. did that too because i um i i picked wemby second but i was like i knew i wouldn't get him in the third round and yeah, i was so you, like so he's going early. to be yeah, special right. yeah fair enough i, I am winning fair... i am winning blocks so he is Hell doing yeah. what I thought he would do. <laughs> he needs to, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, Wiggins, I mean, it's like he's having career lows across the board. I mean, a lot of people are just like, wow, like what's happening with this kid? Like, you know, he was out last year, but it was for personal reasons, right? Like his, mm-hmm. his father's health was struggling. So, you yeah. know, that made sense. I was thinking to myself, you know, like this wasn't like a physical indus- injury and it wasn't like a, a personal mental health thing per se. Yeah. Um, but he struggled and I, I don't know what to make of the whole Wiggins situation. I don't know if he's going to end up on the trading block for these warriors. I'm not sure, but I think they're kind of waiting right now to see if these other role players are going to step up like that one rookie. Who's Pajinski. Named, yes. Had a hell of a night. <laughs> yeah, he did. He did. He had a right. He's, he's really taking the reins. He's got that cute curly hair. Yeah. uh rocking so you know we'll see we'll see what these warriors are gonna <laughs> do in these five games without draymond and potentially without stuff as well mm-hmm. um in other news you know we couldn't go uh a whole week without another uh player in trade rumors and that <laughs> is zach levine you know because it's funny because like we um i've talked about james harden on this pod a lot so i didn't really want to get too into like the clippers are struggling mm-hmm. right now talk because i just feel like that's sort of happening 
I mean, all this is happening everywhere. Who am I kidding? Yeah, but, yeah. you know, they're struggling. It is what it is. We'll see if they figure it out or not. But um, but Zach Levine, you know, it's been rumored that that the Chicago Bulls are actively looking to see what they could get for him, which also means it looks like they are also finally kind of um, bowing out on this era of the Bulls. You know, I mean, obviously it hasn't helped that uh, that ball's been injured, right? Yep. And all this stuff. So it's kind of unfortunate. It kind of makes me a little sad for them. But uh, where do you think they're going to go through with this? And where do you think Zach Levine could end up? Yeah, I do think they're going to go through with this. Uh, I think it just makes sense for them to trade him and start anew. Now, I don't know what they're going to be able to get for him just because of his contract and like, you know, he's not necessarily like he's got a big contract. I think it's mm -hmm. it's 40 million for the next four years. Yeah, it's it's a big it's a big deal. Like you're you're trading for a guy who's going to take up a large amount of your salary cap. So I, I don't know where um, or sorry, I don't know. I don't know, like what they'll be able to get back for him. But I think I love the idea of him on the Lakers um, just because of the fit. Uh, I think they need that sort of like scoring guard type to kind of alleviate some pressure from LeBron and AD. And I think if they can somehow keep Austin Reeves out of that deal, they're going to come away pretty big winners in that scenario. Yeah. Now, I don't know like what what the package would be, but I like the Lakers. As well, a I was trying to do this on the on the old trade machine mm -hmm. before we started, and I didn't come up with a solution for the Lakers because – um, they actually don't have a lot of room to absorb a forty million dollar salary. It would have to be like a haul. Yeah. And I was trying to make the math work, and it was I, I didn't figure it out in time of recording this. Um, I don't think it. I don't know if they could do it and keep Austin Reeves. I yeah. will say that. But also to like, I have a good feeling that the Lakers would give up D'Angelo Russell in a second. I don't think LeBron likes him. <laughs> I just feel like LeBron is putting up with him and he's doing his best, but I just feel like there's certain plays like, like I'm telling you watch a Lakers game. And then when D'Angelo Russell, like turns over the ball, just immediately look at LeBron. <laughs> I promise you he's rolling his eyes. He is rolling his eyes half the time. And he is trying so hard not to be frustrated with him. So right. I absolutely think he would be involved in that type of trade. Um, you know, it would also have to include someone like Rui Hachimura. Yep. Um, maybe Gabe Vincent as well. Like, it would have to be three to four players. Absolutely, yeah. And then, like, the picks and whatever pick swaps that are available to the Lakers to, to yeah. move him and get Levine. Um, I, I think it would take a lot. But I do like Levine as a as a Laker. I think it makes sense for them. And I think ultimately, like like you mentioned, like D'Lo to Levine is an upgrade for the Bull for the Lakers. Um, yeah. Even Gabe and Rui, like those guys, like you have ways to assure that you can kind of like sustain without those guys. Um, and yeah, I think I ultimately like it. I could also see people bringing up Philly, although I don't want Philly to make that trade. I don't mm. think it makes as much sense. Like. Maxi is doing so well. Let Maxi be him. You don't need to bring a third fiddle in there. Yeah. Um, I actually the the bull. I'm more the bull. The bull. I'm more interested in is Alex Caruso and where he goes because he's like he can fit into any contender. He's going to yeah. be so good in literally any spot he goes to. And I think they're they might actually get more, not more, but like they might get a pretty good return for Caruso compared to Levine where you're like, ah, oh, maybe they could have got more if they traded him earlier, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Um, but yeah, I'm interested by the way, since this is like a Raptors adjacent podcast, yes. I'm saying no to Zach Levine. No, thank you. I, I don't think it makes sense for them. Uh, they'd have to move off of Siakam to do that trade. And yeah. you're taking on a massive amount of salary uh, in order to do that. I just think, no, doesn't make sense. I agree. And I don't think um, at this stage he would make the Raptors that much better. I think yeah. he would only make us marginally better. And that's only on the offensive end. Right. Yeah. And and like, yeah, the, the fit with Scotty would be cool. I think like they would work well together. I think, you know, I mean, shooting is obviously a clear need for this team and he would help in that regard. But like, 
I don't know the risk versus the re reward. And I assume the, the bulls would want some picks in return too. And I just don't think that's worth it for where this team is. Like you're not trying to give up picks, please, for the love of God, stop. Yeah. Trading away yeah. Your picks. So, yeah. I yeah. agree. And also too, like if we are going to trade Siakam, I would prefer to go young, mm -hmm. go younger. Yeah. Yeah. And like Zach Levine's 28. And so mm -hmm. I just don't see that being the exact same timeline as Scotty Barnes and like, you know, who are in just building around Scotty. Right. So, yeah, I agree. I don't really see it for the Raptors. I, um, I do see it for the Knicks and yeah. I'm not saying like, this is a good move for the Knicks, but it feels like a New York Knicks type of move. And in the trade machine, uh, they could trade RJ Barrett and Evan Fournier and it mm -hmm. works. Yeah. And I, I actually think that's a trade both sides would do. I think the Bulls would want to get um, one more guy in there, whether it be Emmanuel Quickly or whether it be you know something like that. I think the the Bulls would try to get more from that. But I agree with you that this is a very Knicks move, and like him and Brunson make sense together as a backcourt. I could see them doing it without like having to give too too much up. So if another star pops up, they can maybe go ahead and make another trade. I kind of like it. I wonder yeah. though, if maybe this is the spot where you can flip Julius Randall and you're like, yeah. okay, Hey, you guys take on Randall, but you also get Emmanuel quickly. And it's like, yeah, I think, right. it, I think like, a, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I feel like if the bulls were to take on Randall, they are like, okay, we're just tanking fully. Oh yeah. Yeah. Now, because they're, they're different positionally and you're just not getting those points back. Yeah. But um, yeah, unless a third team got involved, right? In which case that could be fun. But yeah, I think the Knicks are going to be really on top of this. I could see that. I could yeah. see that. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Yeah. Either way, he's he's a either way he's gone. Knicks. Yes. He's yeah. Gone. Either, either way, he's he he's definitely the next star to get traded, and then you know after that, I think all the attention turns to Siakam. But we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Um, one more NBA thing before we go into Raptors. And this is actually pretty like Canadian related. And that is expansion talk. So oh, yeah. uh, Adam Silver did this interview uh, during a broadcast on Monday. And he mentioned Vancouver and Montreal. Uh, also Mexico City as possible international expansion cities. First of all, I interviewed Alex Wong last week and he was like, no, I don't see this ever happening. And then <laughs> just days later, haha, gotcha. Uh, Adam Silver mentions this. Uh, I didn't know Montreal was in consideration and contention for this. Apparently, there has been an ownership group in Montreal pursuing this, but they've also been pursuing it for like allegedly like six years. Right. So I'm not sure where that is at this point if it's at a standstill if it has some sort of forward momentum but do you think this could be a reality at some point first of all i was at the montreal game uh in october it was a thunder versus detroit pistons game and like yeah they had lou dort there he was the hometown favorite sga obviously canadian so like a lot of people came out to support those guys but that was like one of the best environments I've ever been in in my life. Like the crowd was like a playoff crowd. Uh, so I do think there's like a hunger for NBA there and NBA basketball. I wonder if they do bring a team so close to the Raptors though, because it is five mm. hours away. Maybe that takes, I'm not saying like people would just stop being Raptors fans in Montreal, but like I, I do think there is something there for them adding another team and like, it's no longer Toronto Raptors are no longer Canada's team, right? They're no, mm -hmm, they can't do mm -hmm. the whole we the North thing because, you know, Montreal would also be able to do the we the North thing. I like the idea of Vancouver, mm -hmm. but I still also think if if the NBA moves to that area of the world, they're probably going to pick Seattle just because of you know the obvious Sonics bit of it. So yeah, I'm I'm skeptical to be honest with you. I kind of feel I kind of feel like Alex does. I'm I'm kind of skeptical, but I would be super happy and also. I would want a job. So yes, it would be great. If okay. They, I yeah. would be, yeah. it, it would be great if they brought more NBA teams to Canada because it gives basketball people more jobs in this country. So I would love it. Absolutely love it. If they brought another team to Canada, I don't know how, or if they end up doing it, I will say this. I think it'll be Vegas and Seattle 
in the next couple of years. And then I think maybe like 10 years down the road, we'll get a Mexico City team and maybe a Montreal team. I don't think that we'll, maybe we'll get to like 34 at some point, but it won't be this initial one. You know what I mean? Yes, I um I agree. I fully, fully agree. I think it would be a lot of fun. I think culturally, Montreal, even colder. Yeah. yeah even very, colder. They're going to yeah. get a lot of that. Yeah. Also, uh, drinking age, 18. Oh, party right. Party city. Right. So the, the rookie. Party city. Yeah. Built in home court advantage. That's true. The Raptors win games because this is a party city. <laughs> and Montreal is an even bigger party. I, I like to call it the Vegas of Canada. That is what Montreal is. In a yeah. Lot of so yeah. it's like, even though there'll be an expansion team and they won't be good for like five years at minimum. Yeah. Uh, built in advantages right there. Oh yeah. Yeah. Things to super. consider. Things to consider. I don't, I don't hate that. And I, I think honestly, I really do think like Montreal would be really up for an NBA team because there are a lot of Toronto Raptors fans in Montreal right now. Like there's tons. And if the Raptors, I mean, the Raptors have done exhibition games in Montreal before sold out crowd, all that type of stuff. I think the hunger is there for it. Some people are like, Oh, Montreal only, only supports the Canadians. They only like their hockey. I kind of disagree. Changed, I, yeah. I think, I think it's changing. I think there's a lot of interest in basketball and also a lot of the good ba basketball talent from this country is starting to come from Montreal. Lou Dort, right? Another mm -hmm. great example of this, but there's like multiple other like younger Boucher, guys, Boucher, yeah. uh, Matherin, Matherin. Yeah, absolutely. And like, there's more that's coming from that area of the country. So I just, I think there's, there's a really big potential there for Montreal. Yeah, I I love it. I actually would love the idea of like a little rivalry. Yeah. Uh, you're right. We wouldn't be able to do the We the North thing anymore. I don't know what happens with that. But I also feel like the Raptors have kind of moved away they have. from the We yeah. the North thing in recent years anyway. So mm -hmm. I don't know if we're going to maybe have a pass the torch <laughs> uh, of the We the North thing or something like that. That could be really fun. Um, I do think Vegas and Seattle would be up next. Um, I also feel like, you know, how many teams, how many franchises are, is the NBA going to have, mm -hmm. right? Cause it's like, there's already complaints that the regular season is too long. Right. You know, you, I don't know if you could really expand far beyond 82 games, right? Like no, yeah, there's already, true. there's already too many games. So I wonder like, would a franchise have to move? Mm, maybe. Right. Like, I don't, I don't know who, but like, you know. I feel like the Pelicans have always been a little not completely stable. You yeah. know what I mean? Like would a franchise like that have to move mm -hmm. for that to realistically become an option? Maybe. Yeah, maybe. I will say, though, the benefit of just adding a team versus moving a team is that 100% of the revenue from someone purchasing a team goes directly to the owners. So. Right. So like, let's say someone makes a $5 billion bid for a Seattle team or a Vegas team, $5 billion gets spread across the 30 teams and owners are totally down for that versus when you move, it's just another team is moving to a different country, uh, different city and nobody gets any money from that. So I think people like mm. they would I be did, I didn't know that those logistics. I didn't know until recently too. And okay. I, I think that's, that's what incentivizes like, Hey, let's get some money into the pockets of these, you know, these already very rich owners. And they're like, that's why the owners would be totally down for expansion versus relocation. Right. Damn. Yeah. Cool. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, with that, let's move into our Raptors Homer moment. Uh, we had another blowout loss last night. I'm calling it a blowout. I know there was a bit of a comeback there, but I'm it was a blowout. It a blowout. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know, I feel like there are still some positives, right, to take away from this Raptors season so far, especially you know, Scotty Barnes emerging more and things like that. But I want to ask you, as someone who truly analyzes basketball. <laughs> Unlike myself, I'm just analyzing uh, Clay Thompson's uh, <laughs> <laughs> marriage uh, qualities. Uh, <laughs> but if you were in the driver's seat of this Toronto Raptors team, what would you adjust? Uh, I would probably trade Pascal Siakam. 
Uh, yeah, I I don't I hate that I have to say that uh, because it just seemed like it was so uh, avoidable over the last couple of years. But I do think like trading Yaka Pertle, trading for Yaka Pertle, trading a first round pick for Yaka Pertle, trading for Thad Young, uh, some of these moves that they've made, not re-signing Fred, although I think that's a fine move in 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 hindsight. Um, some of these moves have made it much harder to keep Pascal Siakam on the roster. And when you consider OG Ananobi is a free agent this summer, you have to pay him a ton of money. Gary Trent Jr. is a free agent this summer. Scotty Barnes is up for a max extension. Money starts getting really tight. And I think the fit with this team is sort of wonky in the first place. So the easiest place to go is their best player, which is still Siakam, uh, and see what you can get the most out of it. Now, to be honest, probably not in a position where you can get a lot for Siakam just because he's an expiring contract. Maybe you could have got more for him last year or the year before that. But um, yeah, I would probably do that and then sort of restart this this whole movement towards something that's built around Scotty Barnes. I was saying this and I agree with you. Like this is the they they've had really cool moments this season. They're five and six, which is probably a little bit better than I expected them to be, to be honest with you, uh, especially with how hard their schedule has been. But like the the one shining light for this team is the fact that you can rest your hat on the the fact that Scotty Barnes is turning into a star. And he's doing that in spite of this team not necessarily being tailored to him or being catered towards his skill set. Like there's mm-hmm. not a lot of shooting on this team. There's not a lot of ball handling on this team. And those are the two things Scotty needs to like really thrive and get to the next level. And he kind of looks like an all-star this year even despite the fact that they don't have that type of stuff. So Mm -hmm. if you can go out and get, you know, some shooting, some ball handling, maybe some younger guys, like you mentioned with Levine um, for Pascal, you can put yourself. I feel like you're turning around now. Suddenly you're pro trading for Levine. (laughs) No, 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 no. I, I, I refuse. So the reason I say no to Levine is because one, his contract is big. So the, the trading with, so re-signing OG and extending Scotty still becomes difficult. Uh, and two, the Bulls most likely would want picks. And I just don't think the Raptors are in a position to give up picks. So I would say no to Levine. If you could somehow do it where you don't give up Pascal, you know, in a trade for Levine somehow, some way, you're like, okay, we'll give you Gary Trent Jr. and Chris Boucher and you'll like it, you know? <laughs> like, <laughs> if you could somehow do that, sure, okay. And all you'll right. like it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you can do that, okay, fine by me. But uh, at the price and at the risk, I just, I don't see a Levine trade go- happening. I would rather them go for younger guys. Um, like who? Name uh, names. Name names. Uh, name names. I, I like. I like the Pacers a lot as a potential destination for Pascal Siakam. Mm. I'm not sure how much they they visit that. They did visit it in the summer. They tried to explore that option again. I don't know because the Pacers look really good right now, and maybe they're like, "Hey, we're one piece away from being really, really good in the Eastern Conference." So maybe they're more hungry to do this, but. Buddy Heald just requested a trade. I think Buddy Heald would be awesome on this team. Andrew Nembard, fellow Canadian, would look great because of the ball handling and shooting. Maybe Aaron Neesmith, uh, a, a guy who's improved as a shooter and big man, et cetera. Guys like that kind of make sense to me for what this team needs. None of those are like sexy names, but I do think they like pair well better for the future of this franchise, and maybe you can get some picks out of it uh, and go from there. But yeah. Could you imagine if we ended up with Julius Randle? <laughs> Oh God. I, you know what? I'm such a big Emmanuel quickly guy. Like I love Emmanuel quickly. If the Knicks were like, Hey, we'll give you Emmanuel quickly. If you just take Julius Randall, <laughs> I would consider it. I would consider it. I really would because I just, I love IQ. I think he would work perfectly with this team. He'd work well with Scotty Barnes. I, I really like the fit. And I think he could be like a, a franchise point guard for a team. So I, 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 I think about it. I would think about it if, if, if that offer came across my desk. If I was Messiah Jury and I saw the, the offer, I'd consider it. I mentioned the Knicks again because I also see them as a team that would see themselves as one move away. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I mean? Met- Similar to the play- to the Pacers. I mean, I, I just, just don't I think the, 
the Knicks with the lawsuit and James Dolan. Oh, yeah, they're not even talking. I always forget <laughs> about this lawsuit. Yeah, and like the the whole like uh, James Dolan hating Masai thing because uh, he always rips him off in trades thing. I just I don't think those two teams are ever going to make a move with each other. So Fair. I don't know. Yeah, but I, I like in theory, I could I understand it. I get it. Um. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if like I feel like the Heat are another team that would also feel like they're one move away. Yeah. God, yeah. Could you imagine the Thunder Kyle the- back? Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, Kyle, welcome back. We just traded our franchise player for you. Um uh Oklahoma City Thunder, I could mm-hmm. see being another one. That's a mm. fun team. I don't know what they would necessarily trade for Siakam, but that seems like a fun squad. Um maybe the Lakers. I don't know if that necessarily makes sense, but like that same poo poo platter package that you just yeah, mentioned. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cause then they would keep Reeves. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. There's, there's, there's a lot of places that Siakam could end up. It also just depends on how, how willing he is to sign that extension and stay with the team and you know, where, where he decides to go with that. So who knows? So last year I was never team tank. Mm -hmm. Never. I mean, and I'm on the record on this podcast. I was never a team tank, but when we lost Fred for nothing, I started to think, like, was that the time? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I hear you. You know I, what I, I honestly, mean? Like, yeah. like, should we have traded Fred just to get something instead of nothing? I mean, I know it frees up our cap space, so it's not nothing, yeah. nothing. But you know what I mean? Like, was that the year? Yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. I Look, you could have said, was that the year two years in a row, in my opinion, um for just because like yeah, but at least the year before we were like legit in yeah. the playoffs good team four or five seed getting there it felt I, like it felt yeah. like the retooling this team was trying to do was working yeah right right we yeah. we tank the tampa season we get scotty that felt good mm-hmm. he's rookie of the year right. you know we get him some valuable playoff experience we're out the first round but we had already or overachieved yeah so i see that we don't trade him for kevin durant <laughs> you know that whole summer fiasco right and then last year happens and it all kind of falls apart and then this year you know the quote-unquote vibes are better and they are very much right. um but the offense is struggling still the fit is still struggling still and it's like you know something I mean, I, has to give yeah right? yeah you, you're just like I've I've mentioned this before, but like they've kicked the can down the road to the point where like the can is flat, you know, like have you ever seen <laughs> have you ever seen one of those soda cans that like are on the floor? Yeah, of, yeah, of, yeah. Of, and they're just like crushed to the bone. I, that's the can at this point in terms of how much they've kicked the can down the road for this team. I feel like there's no real way to keep salvaging it anymore. Uh, and I, I just I would love to be a fly on the wall in the Raptors front office just to see like where their headspace is at, because I know they tried to trade Siakam this summer. Mm -hmm. They did. They, they did. And they probably didn't expect Siakam to be on this team to start this year. Yes. I believe that to be true as well. Why are they still, why is he still on the team then? If that's the case. And if, you know, I, I just, there's like certain things that I need dots connected, if you will. Uh, mm-hmm. On like what what is the reasoning behind him still being on the team and not having a contract extension? Because if you're thinking like, oh, we didn't get enough for him, he's an expiring contract, but he's still a very good player, then like the 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 reasonable expectation is to extend him so that you can trade him later on. But that no didn't happen box. either. Yeah. So it's I'm just very confused as to like what the real plan is with that scenario. Long term, you're like, hey, you got Scotty. This looks good. Let's keep rolling. But the other stuff, you're just like, huh, uh, I don't know, you know? Yeah. Also, too, like, you know, OG and Anobi, you, you know, you mentioned he's a free agent at the yeah. end of the season. He's a clutch sports guy. Yeah. And he's also, like, not underrated um, mm-hmm. across the league. Like, across the league, people know his value. Right. And he's often talked about in other like fandoms in terms of like trade scenarios, picking this team apart for parts. 
Um, do you think he would re-sign with this team? Uh, I think so. Yes, absolutely. Uh, I think he re-signs with the team. Obviously, it depends. I think given what's happening with the Siakam scenario, if Siakam gets traded, I think the likelihood of OG staying is 10 times higher. If Siakam stays on this okay. team, then I think the likelihood of OG staying is 10 times lower. So it's I think it's I think it's an either or thing to be honest with you. And I I really I hate that it's gotten to that point. But yeah, they're in a position where they have to pick between one of these two players. Just financially. Yeah, absolutely, financially. Yeah. Uh speaking of OG, he once again has a bizarre player injury a laceration of the finger Hilarious. what do you think it was what what do you think he did like what do you think the chore was do you think it was like cutting cucumbers or something you know i just don't even imagine nba players cooking for themselves <laughs> yeah i i don't imagine that either you know actually. what i mean like i just yeah. imagine like they all have personal chefs right and they just like reach into their fridge and, and grab something so what do you think it was because like a, a finger laceration. Essentially, he cut his hand. Okay. Yeah. So, what? First of all, it must have been a oh, pretty bad enough play. that he's like missing missed, time. Right. Missed two games. Like he almost lost his finger. Is what we're saying. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, like, what is what is going on with this finger? That like maybe he like broke a finger. Like, do you think it's like the the uh, knife thing? Like this? Like the like he was doing he was doing a party trick and then he yeah. <laughs> <laughs> whatever that's called you yeah, know the like knife. the knife in between the fingers i don't know yeah what yeah yeah um i don't know man i don't know i gambling really... debts no i'm kidding <laughs> yeah yeah he lost the finger they're just waiting for it to grow back um <laughs> uh i'm trying to think like what it could be like i don't know i don't know what if i cut my finger on doing chores um yeah like cutting things that's the only thing you can really think of yeah. Or maybe like maybe like moving a piece of furniture and actually this has happened to me more often than I'd like to admit moving a piece of furniture and then you know how like there's like a loose nail or something hanging on a piece of furniture and then like it gets into your finger or whatever maybe that could have happened but that's not like you don't miss games for that I don't think you know anyway. I don't know I was trying to think like did like a glass break on his hand I could see that too yeah that's not a bad that's not a bad one you know, he just got, mm -hmm. he, some, he threw a, a scotch glass across the room, vice versa. No, I don't see him being that kind of guy at all. <laughs> um, I don't know. Yeah. It's super bizarre. He has a whole history of just odd injuries and contacts falling out and, you know, vague British accent. Yeah. He's a, he's a character, man. He's, he's a, very, a character. Very How, like if you were to try and get to the bottom of this, what would your approach be? I would, ah, uh, man, I would this probably is a question not on the docket. Yeah, I would probably ask him. I I would try to ask him. I guess like what what happened with just the straight up. You just yeah. be straight up. Yeah, I think they will ask him. I think we will get uh an end to this story Who, at some gonna point. Who's going to ask? Whenever he comes back, no. But who does, is it? You think it's it's not a Doug Smith question? It doesn't feel no, like a Doug Smith question. No, 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 not a Doug Smith question. I think it's it feels like an Aaron Rose question. You know? <laughs> okay. Yeah. I think it feels like an Aaron Rose question. He's gonna be like, "So, OG, what happened to your hand?" And, I, and OG's gonna be like, "Oh man, like I cut it doing chores. What chores? What were you doing? Oh, I lettuce. I was cutting lettuce, and it happened. I don't know. Yeah, but, and then that clip will go viral. Just yeah, exactly. OG saying, saying lettuce. <laughs> yeah i i would love to know what that but you're right he has such odd injuries just like the weirdest things of all time happening to him eyes uh he had the goggles for a little bit he yeah the appendix i forgot the, the appendix. appendix the appendix burst yeah so yeah oh my god there was kept so him out of the whole title run mm -hmm. yeah gosh what a weirdo i called him a, a manic pixie dream boy um <laughs> Which feels appropriate to me. You know what I mean? Because it's just like, because like the, the rom-com girl's always like, oh, I'm a little clumsy. You know? Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But I'm perfect. And I feel <laughs> like OG is like that. That's too. what OG is. Yeah. I can see that. He's clumsy. I, that. But he's I like the comp. I like the comp. Thank you. Thank you. Also, 
how fun would it be for OG to be in a rom com? I was thinking this just before we started recording. Like, it would be so fun if he was just like that mysterious guy in the rom com that was like, <laughs> I don't need love. And then he locks eyes with someone. <laughs> what would be the, the movie? What would be the movie you're thinking of? Here? Like, what, what's know. the comp? I don't know. 10 Things I Hate About. No. no. Um, Maybe what about that like, one. No, go ahead. Like a like a Harry Met Sally, like a one Harry Met Sally. Okay, um, I could see that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I just <laughs> gotta. He needs some. He needs some like acting, like coaching, just in terms of like you know, like comedic timing and stuff. Right. But then also we'll be like just improv some lines. He like. is. He is pretty funny though. Like that Staples commercial is actually pretty funny. But like, yeah, make the paint your office. Make the paint your own. I just I like that. I, it, it's funny. He did, I feel like he does have a good comedy, like a humor to him. That should I, I think, should I write a, a rom com and, and pitch him? Yeah. Okay. Why not? This might be this might be my this, thing. This is a Saturday, right? This is Saturday for you. Just write a rom com. No big deal. <laughs> I can turn out scripts pretty quick, but I don't know if in one day I could do it. <laughs> you know, I'm not Chat GPT. Uh yeah. <laughs> Shout out to David Zaslav or whatever his name is thinking, you know, AI can replace everybody. Yeah, yeah absolutely not. Um, anyway, uh, let's move on <laughs> to our Raptors <laughs> hottie highlight. And this one is a little bit debatable in that I have I have some opinions about this one. Okay. But it was definitely a hottie moment. And that was Darko and the team standing up to Joe Missoula during that blowout, the timeout. Being yeah. like, don't disrespect us like this. That was mm -hmm. easily the hottest moment this week with the Raptors. Um, I enjoyed it thoroughly. Uh, is, I love that Darko... it was the highlight of the whole game. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Definitely the highlight of the whole game. It was so... shared more than any other basketball highlight. That's for sure. <laughs> I've I've heard this from other people that that find Darko attractive, uh, at like a, a hunk in terms of a coach. How do you feel? He's all right. Okay. All right. So he's not like, you know, Nick Nurse or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I had my moment with Nick, but the thing is, is that like Nick was like a personality crush. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because like so the, the fuzzy teddy bear Darko vibes don't get you. <laughs> Listen, if, maybe like if Darko picks up a guitar or something like okay. I've never claimed to have good taste in men. <laughs> let's just okay. put that out fair, there right now i never enough. claimed that i had good taste although i think clay thompson's good taste but i never claimed <laughs> to have good taste i just nick was like an oddball and he 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 reads a lot he's always like he's always taking a course in something yeah. like he's yeah, always yeah. taking random classes and other things and, and then yeah i just i felt like especially during the title run right he just he was he was he exuded an energy that you enjoyed. Yes. Yes. I got you. I got That's you. what it yeah. was. Like, I didn't even do the Nick Nurse shrine. <laughs> Someone else did the shrine. <laughs> like, think about that. Yeah. No, you're you know? right. You're right. You know, but I think I think with Darko, I need more personality insights. That's okay. what I'm missing. Because even with Clay, like to me, what makes Clay Thompson so hot is like he loves his dog and he has a boat mm -hmm. and he likes to like dance on his boat and he listens to a lot of uh jan jackson you know stuff like that so i'm like oh like we would get along mm -hmm. it's not just the looks does this make sense yeah i need i need i need intel no into, I, I get it into darko's personality you, you I, need the more... fact that the vibes are good help he right. also looked shorter than me is he short um, I think he's like five eleven, six. Maybe. Okay, so we're like the same. Like I'm five ten. Yeah, so that's fine. I yeah. have a height bias. I have been with people shorter than me, but it's a bias. Okay, we're talking about like it's all good. Notable you are, people here. You're you're tall. You are a tall person. So yes, I, I completely understand to want to be with another tall person. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> um, no, I I I think uh. Yeah, Darko's like I would say like five ten, five eleven. Yeah, he comes across. I mean, I mean, Nick Nurse wasn't that tall. Maybe he was like six feet. 
I Nick don't know. was actually like six two, six three. Really? He's like he's like a tall dude. Yeah, he's oh, not okay. that. He, he's a taller dude. He's like man. Sometimes these coaches are deceptively tall because you like obviously look at them next to NBA players and you're like, oh, he's like a regular sized human being. But like even next to NBA players, they like, you know. They're, they're yeah, not yeah, that yeah. short. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I need more like I need more Darko personality insights. I want to know like like what kind of music he listens to, if he listens to music, what right. kind of podcasts is, is he into, what mm -hmm. are his favorite books? Like I right. want to know more about like his interests. No, I hear you. I hear you. Right? I need, Cause, I need, like, I... Cause like Nick Nurse was like, I I I grew up listening to Prince and like jazz and would like go to record stores in like different cities. Right. Yeah. and stuff like that you know what i mean or like like he he found like a piano store in like san francisco and like would go in and like play the piano during the nba finals it's like those are the tidbits <laughs> that i enjoy um what do you think because in that clip we got a chance to look at joe missoula yeah glasses you see them right yeah what are your thoughts typically i love a guy with glasses Okay. I wear glasses. Obviously, I love a guy with glasses. Glasses Even and like, height bias. Wow. Like, the, like the Rock started wearing glasses recently, and I was like, "Oh my really? god!" Yeah, yeah. Go, go to his Instagram. He started wearing glasses recently, and I was like, "Wow, this guy just like keeps getting hotter somehow." <laughs> but, um, but Joe Mazzula, I don't know about this guy. He gives me weird vibes. He he does definitely. He see he comes across like a total weirdo. Yeah. I I I like I agree. like a like like I don't know I don't know about Joe Mazzula like like I remember oh God it it's been too long since I've seen it to like quote it but when when the Celtics were in the playoffs last year all his post game press conferences were really strange and you could tell the media like after like a whole year of that guy or a whole season no one really knew how to talk to him yeah. And I was just like, yeah, I don't know. Joe Mazzulli so, gives me weird vibes. There sure. was there was a moment this year uh, where Gary Washburn, he's a Celtics beat writer. He like asked Joe Mazzulli, he's like, oh, you guys took like 53s tonight. Do you think that's maybe a little bit too much? And Joe Mazzulli responds, you know, funny enough, I read an article of yours from 2016 today. And this is that, what I'm talking about. Yeah. And, and he, and he's, and he's like, in that article, article, you said the Celtics uh, took too many threes and it's been nine years. So do you still feel that? Why do you still feel that way? And it's like, Whoa, that is just like weird. And it wasn't even the gotcha that he thought it was, but it's just like that. Yeah. That it just makes him look psychotic. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's, and it's you know what? Strange. Maybe it was too many threes in 26 <laughs> like who knows maybe he actually it was had a, it was yeah. it was yeah like maybe he had a legit point back then that it was too many threes yeah and honestly he kind of still does i think the celtics do take a lot of threes and like that's a concern i have for them in the playoffs but anyways that's neither here nor there um yeah, yeah but it's a valid point yeah absolutely. and it is basketball so it's like, like you have to be willing to you can ask bring that questions. up twice yeah. a decade Mm -hmm. yeah oh my god yeah you're right twice a literally a decade it's been yeah really... like that's not strange <laughs> yeah missoula missoula is lower on the on the 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 spectrum of attractiveness i guess if you would call it whatever it yeah because personality goes a long way for me so yes, it's just like you mm -hmm. gotta like when you're when you're like that oh red flags red flags <laughs> red flags everywhere with that guy i hear you yeah yeah yeah, no, definitely not. I I don't know who the other hotties are to be honest, coaching wise I, this year. I I just no one's really. Have I brought up Quinn Snyder to you before in the in the in Quinn this podcast? Snyder. Quinn Snyder definitely like he has very like California. Yes, absolutely. like 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 the like the SNL sketch like California. Right, right. He does have that vibe a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's a he apparently in his past life he liked to party a lot. He liked to party a lot, so maybe. Yeah, I also party a bit. Mm -hmm. You you partake very nice. I partake in some parties, but that's just because I do stand up comedy. It's not for any other reason. <laughs> I don't actively seek things out. I'm just at a place and things. Happen. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, is my lifestyle, uh, which might be an indictment on my character. Who knows? Um, but anyway, uh, Darko hottie vibes this week. Standing up for the team. I uh the way I, the reason why I said it was a bit controversial is because 
I also don't mind that Joe Missoula did that. And yeah. I don't and I don't mind and I don't consider it disrespectful to call a coach's challenge in a blowout because he basically his statement, and this might be the one thing about Joe Missoula that I actually like, or what yeah, I agreed with what he said, was that he basically said, like, hey, look, like these minutes matter mm -hmm. to the players on the court. Yeah. Because they're playing like these are players that don't get a ton of minutes, right? Like this is garbage time, but it means something to them. And so he's like, I'm going to stand up for them because it means something to them. And I actually really like that. And yeah. I and I don't consider it disrespectful at all. Um, I do like Darko sticking up for his boys and all of that. But it, it, it's not disrespectful, in my opinion. It was the rare both sides are right uh, yes. thing. Because yeah. I, I completely agree from Joe Mazzulla's perspective. It's like, yeah, like you want to coach – till every minute and show that like this matters to your players as well. And from Darko's perspective, you don't want them to disrespect your players and make it seem like, you know, you're, you're kind of like wasting their time, if you will. Uh, so I get it. I get it from both sides, to be honest with you. I actually, I can't believe that how like blown out of proportion that whole thing was. Um, I thought it was a pretty like non story, but I guess it would, it became such a big story just because, well, of, like, you know why it, be it became a story is because there was no story to be had from the game itself. You know what? Fair enough. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Hey, in season tournament tomorrow. Oh, well, yeah, technically tomorrow. If you're listening. No. Yeah. Yeah. It'll be, uh, this, uh, we're recording Thursday. It'll be out Friday. So, um, so today, today, ladies so and gentlemen, in season in tournament, season tournament today, finally we're in baby. Yeah. I we're know. in it. It, we're in it. We're one of the last teams to uh, partake. The so. last team. Oh, we're the, the last, last team, team, I think. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's funny that they were the last team to have a play-in game or a, a, an in-season tournament game. Always forgotten about, right? Toronto yeah. Raptors, always forgotten about. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, real quick before we go, do you have any uh, thoughts on these uh, in-season tournament courts? Uh, they're ugly, but I like the fact that they're trying them. Uh, and I, okay. I like I like the fact that they're being creative with it. I, the blues look better than the reds. The, I think reds the reds are hard on the eyes. They are hard on the eyes. And it's just really, it's it's not fun to look at. But the blues look good. The, the blues actually do, they're a little bit softer on the eyes. It's a little bit easier to digest. I think um, the way they should go about it is instead of doing the whole court, like have the strip in the middle as the color and call it a day and maybe add the logo of the, the trophy. You don't have to do the whole court. Maybe that's something they amend next year. They're probably going to continue making tweaks tweaks to this uh, tournament. Yeah, yeah, it's the first year. Yeah. I agree. Some courts are pretty rough. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure they've heard, you know, all of the crazy comments online. Um, so yeah, I'm sure there'll be some adjustments. But uh, I'm actually yeah. really looking for. Wait, are we debuting the Raptors court? Or are we on the road? We are. Yeah. I'm yeah. so excited to see this Raptors court. I know. Because in the online images, I was like, this actually looks like one of the best courts. Yeah, it does look nice. It does. But look it's nice. so hard to tell from a little thumbnail, right? Some of them do look really good. Like the Lakers one was actually really nice. Yes. I like the Lakers yeah, one. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's there's a couple of really good ones out there. So I, I like the fact that the NBA is willing to be creative and inventive and like risk taking and whatnot. You know, in our business, it's like be as as open as possible. It, like, I love it. I love that. Um, yeah, you're going to have to tweak it and like work on it as the years go. But I like the, the fact that they're trying something new. Yeah. Um, just last thing before we go, S. Um, in the future, the next time you have a chance to uh, talk to Darko, feel free to okay. ask some of these questions. What is he, okay. What's he? What's he reading? What's he what, listening what's, to? Yeah. What, you know, what does give, Darko do on his spare time? Yeah. yeah help me get a little more uh, insight into uh, his personality. Help us. It's not just for me. Okay. This is for the the whole collective of of raptors fans here you know of what course. i mean i feel like you're you're the right one for the job you think i'm gonna aaron rose this and ask him about the the question hey, yeah hey why you not? know what you i know haven't what? had this conversation with aaron rose you and i are having this conversation <laughs> no right you're now. right you're right you're right and shout out to aaron because i feel like he'd be willing to take shout out to aaron uh but uh, man okay sounds good next time i see darko i will ask him what his hobbies and yeah you know are, just like you know? like it doesn't have to be like the next time Right, you know, make sure he's like in a good mood. Yeah, you know all that stuff. But yes, yes, please. We we want to know. I I, I don't think you. I'm the only one. Okay, I got you. Of course. All yeah, right. I know. You need more than just good vibes, right? You need more than just like him being a a fun, happy go lucky guy. We want to know what he's up to. 
Yes. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. A little more about who he is. Um, mm -hmm. As uh, first of all, uh, congratulations on your YouTube stuff. That's getting a lot of traction lately. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, take a moment to uh, to promote it. Let everybody know uh, where they can find you on the internet. Yeah. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Just S. Barahini. Post a lot of my work on there. You can go on the SDPN YouTube channel uh, and you can find all of the Raptors stuff on there. Some NBA stuff, obviously, as well. Listen to the Objective Basketball Podcast where we talk Ooh. about basketball more in depth. And yeah, that's it. That's all I got. Thank you very much, as always, Catherine, for bringing me on. Thanks for being here. Uh, thanks, everyone, for listening, and we'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye.